Hi folks, um, I'm going to demonstrate a technique today that uh, I think you're going to really enjoy. You're going to find this really useful. This is uh, what we're going to call nested animation. So as an example, I'm using, or as an analogy, I'm using uh, the nesting dolls. All right, so if you take a look, everybody's seen these nesting dolls before. You've got a, a doll, you open it up, and inside is a smaller doll. And then you open that up, and inside that is a smaller doll, all the way down, right? Uh, this, we call it nesting because you've got one inside another, inside another, inside another. Okay, so keep that idea in mind. Um, I'm going to create a really simple, basic uh, nested animation. Okay, a nested animation is one in which I have one animation inside another animation. Okay, so just like those Russian dolls, I can have uh, a, I can make a more complex thing by putting a few simple things together. Okay, so I'm gonna just start a new composition here. Um, I'm gonna make it uh, 10 seconds long and I'm just gonna keep a white background for now. So here's my starting um, uh, stage. It's a, a basic blank document. Um, I'm just gonna draw a little uh, character here really quickly. Um, I'm going to make this really simple. We're going to do a um, basic character design. So I'm going to draw it with a uh, circle tool or an ellipse tool. A um, couple of little suggestions. When you're, when you're drawing, while you're, while you're drawing the shape, if you hold the space bar, you can move that shape around. Um, and I'm going to work here to get that shape uh, right in the center. So I want to just um, make this sort of a, a round ball shaped character and I'm going to put him right in the center of the screen. Um, <clears throat> just going to uh, fix this on my screen. So while this uh, object is currently selected I'm going to give him uh, two eyes and I'm going to change the color of the eye to white. All right, and I'm going to make another one like that. Um, you can change the color of these at any time, so uh, you can do it after you've created it or before you've created it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the important thing here is that uh, I still have the original circle selected. I never deselected it, so that means that as I'm drawing these little shapes here, um, they're all connected together. So they're all part of the same object because of the way that I drew these shapes. If you were to click off of the original shape and then start drawing, uh, those shapes would be separate. Okay, so uh, if I grab this shape and move it around, it moves independently of this one. If you keep the shape selected as you're drawing with the drawing tool, uh, you'll be creating uh, basically connected shapes that uh, will move together. Okay, so when I grab my selection tool, my move tool here, this whole object, you know, this little guy will, uh, all the parts of him will move together. Um, I'm just going to add one more detail, give him a red tongue, just like that. Okay, so there is my uh, little character. Um, you can spend as, as much or as little <laughs> effort as you want making this initial object. So uh, because I kept that, kept the object selected, all of those objects are connected together and they're on a single shape layer, which is right here. So over here you can see this shape layer one and the contents of it are all those circles that I used or ellipses that I used uh, to make that little face. Um, down here is the transform for the entire object. So if I want to say, you know, move him across the screen, I turn on position, okay, go forward on my timeline, and then move him where I want, and uh, he will move from one position to the other. Okay, so that's very simple. We we know how to do that. Um, what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to do a very simple animation of him bouncing up and down. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to create a ground plane 
here for him to bounce off of. Um, deselect him, and let me just do a uh, let's do it like a grassy ground like that. Okay, and I'm gonna put that layer under. Oops, put that layer under that layer. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him bounce up in the air and then bounce back down. That's it. Very simple. Um, you know what? I'm going to take off the ground plane, actually. Forget that I did that. <laughs> it actually, the, the next step doesn't work if I put the ground down at this point, so I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, I'll bring the ground back later. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to have him bounce up and down. That's it. So uh, I'm going to open his transform. I'm going to turn on position okay and I'm gonna go forward a little bit uh, in this case half a second about right there and I'm just gonna make him bounce up a little bit and then bounce back down okay so I'm gonna have him bounce whoops have him bounce up and back down and then the longest time bounce is going to be the highest bounce. He's going to actually go off the screen and then uh, bring him back down. Oops. Okay, then I'll do two lower bounces. And then a little mini hop. Okay, so uh, if I go back to the beginning and play it, you'll see him bounce up and down, up and down, all the way off, back down, and then again. So I wasn't crazy about that one. Move that up a little bit, space this out just a little bit. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that you can make the bounces go faster by putting the time closer together. So if I want these bounces to move at a different speed, uh, you can do that just by changing the spacing of your keyframes down here. So if the keyframes are closer together, uh, the movement will be faster. If the keyframes are spread farther apart, the, uh, the movement will be slower, okay? Um, so that's that. That's this, a, a very simple and basic animation. He bounces up, bounces down, very simple, okay? Um, let's do the nesting part. So here's where it gets interesting. So remember our uh, nesting doll. So I've got uh, one doll nested inside of another and nested inside of another. What am I talking about? Here's what I'm going to do. Over here, I have all the different uh, assets, all the different pieces or things that we can use in our um, animation. So I'm currently I have only one composition, and it's called Comp1. All right, I'm going to create a new one. This little button right down here creates a new composition. It's gonna, I'm going to keep it the same, 10 seconds, white background, uh, not changing anything. Uh, and notice I now have two compositions, and everything I did disappeared. So the reason that disappeared is because if you see up here at the top, I'm now editing composition number two. All right. Uh, if I go back to composition number one, it's still there. It's all good. Um, but I'm now editing composition number two. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select my composition one over here, and I'm going to drag it and drop it right onto composition two. So I'm just dragging what I already did over here, comp one, onto my new composition. And I put it right in the center. All right. So if I play this, what it's actually doing now is it's, it's playing the original composition, even though I'm inside the second composition. So you see now how this... Uh, this nesting aspect works. Here's what I was talking about. I can take one simple composition and nest it inside of another composition to create uh, something more complex. All right. So in other words, uh, what if I were to take like, uh, I don't know, a couple of these. Uh, in fact, what if I made, uh, I could make a whole little army of them if I wanted to. And I do want to, so I will. So all these guys now are their own little 
composition layer. You see them down here at the bottom. Uh, I have five copies, and when I play it, they'll all play together. Okay. If I uh, change the spacing down here of when they appear, uh, they will appear uh, staggered over a short period of time. So now they're they're all slightly out of sync. They're all jumping at, at their own pace and at their own rate. Um, but really, they're just copies of the exact same um, composition repeating over and over and over again, which is fun. All right. So I'm going to get rid of all these, um, and I'm going to work just with this one. Now, what I can do with this little guy, if I open up my menu over here, you'll see I have my own uh, uh, transforms that I can apply to this now. So if I go to position, let me go back to the beginning of the video. Okay, if I go to position, and I say have him start right over here, and I go to the end, and I move him over to here, uh, you can probably imagine what's going to happen. I'm still going to see the bouncing, except now he's bouncing uh, left and right, as well as up and down. So in my first composition, all he does is bounce up and down. But I created the second composition where you now see him bouncing left and right, up and down. That's basically it. That's the idea. Um, if I wanted to, uh, I could... Actually, I'm going to just change one little thing here. Um, I'm going to have him start just off the screen, and then I'm going to have him end off the screen. So now when I play this, he starts off the edge of the screen, jumps off the screen to the opposite side, and then starts again. So as this video loops, you'll just see the same thing happen again and again. Um, this would be a great time now if I wanted to uh, create that ground plane that I was missing earlier. Um, I can go ahead and draw that shape in there now. Um, so if I just deselect that, create a new shape, and just draw it right there, there's my ground. Um, I want the ground to be under the guy, like so. Uh, and now if I play it, you'll see he just bounces right along on the ground there. Cool. Give it a shot. It's fun.